Hello, this is Robert Daly with the Daily Woodworks YouTube channel and dailywoodworks.com, serving the Brazos Valley in Texas. Um, I've got another new table saw. If you've been following my channel, you will see I've done three videos over my green table saw that I had. Um, unfortunately, um, two of those saws that I had uh, broke prematurely within a couple of months of ownership. Um, I did a video over the first failure, um, the second one failed in a different way um, that I'll go into another time. So I returned that and I decided to go with the rigid uh, portable heavy duty table saw. Um, I'm not going to do a review of this saw, there are plenty of reviews out there. Um, this has been an established saw for quite some time in the field, has consistently good reviews um, from magazines and uh, YouTube reviewers alike going over this saw in excruciating detail. What I'm doing today is my biggest complaint with this saw has nothing to do with cut claw. The cut claw is great, um, the fence on this is superb. This is probably one of the best fences I've come across on a saw, which was which was a big deal to me. The fence is a very important part. Cut quality is good, but the dust collection on this is very poor. This is the dust that has piled up underneath the saw from about a day of use. And running dust collection at the same time. You can see we've got dust up here crowding the track. And so I'm going to go and do some mods to improve the dust collection of this stall, starting with a zero clearance um, insert and a new saw blade. So whenever you're trying to make dust collection work better, the goal is to plug up holes to make the air be sucked tighter and faster through a smaller opening. That way it's forced all the chips. The only place they have to go is through the dust collection port. Right now I'm getting a lot of spit back just because the sides are open, things like that. And so I'm going to do a zero clearance insert. One thing I hate doing is make, taking the time to make zero clearance inserts. This one has a pretty thin plate, about a little less than an eighth of an inch. It does have really cool adjustable screws. I could definitely make my own. But FastCap makes a really cool product, um, zero clearance tape. It's basically a like a one thirty second thick uh, PVC tape, and you just stick it down on your throat plate and then you cut your open that gives you a zero clearance insert. This has adjustable screws so I can lower it down so if this 30 second of an inch causes any problems I can easily go back and fix that. So the first step is to cut it to the right length. So you stick that down, get really good contact using a fresh blade i'm going to go in and open back up the thumb port and you notice i cut that on pretty hard bevel that way i don't have any sharp lips in the way all right so that's stuck i'll let it sit for a minute or two i'm gonna go plug the saw back in and do the next step so that gives you a great zero clearance um my throat plate is adjusted just slightly below the surface. This works on any table saw. I did it on my old saw. Um, did it on my miter saw. I um, really like this. It's quick. It's easy. Eventually, you have to change it out, but that's not a big deal. So now we've got to get it readjusted for the riving knife. So now it fits. I'm all in the all the way up position. And all I'm going to do is this back section, I'm just going to cut that out. there, cut there, and now I have my slot from a riving knife. You notice we're not going super pretty here, we're going super functional. So that's that, your riving knife will now work, your splitter will now work, um, you can put your guard back on, etc. Now you have a zero clearance insert for your table saw using uh, FastCap's zero clearance tape. Um, there'll be an Amazon link in the description below. So our biggest fender right here is this gap right here. So the goal is to close this up while still being allowing the saw to pivot on the axis so you can do that with that. 
All right, so I took this off. It just connects with some screws at the bottom. And now I've got to figure out basically this notch I've got to close out. I've got to have it where it can give so that if I have the saw at an angle, it'll still work. So I'm debating about using some more of this PVC tape to give it a little bit of strength and then wrapping it on both sides with Gorilla Tape to allow flexibility and to keep the sticky side from being exposed. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And one thing about this, like I'm not permanently modifying my tools. Um, sometimes I will if it really calls for it. Or, you know, I've had it for a long time. I don't care. This is still under warranty, so I'm going to... Um, of course, it's rigid, so it comes with a lifetime service agreement, which they do honor. They do a really good job honoring that. Um, I had to use it once. Um, but I'm not going to spend a lot of money uh, coming up with really fancy ways of doing this. I'm going to try nice, simple ways that I hope are effective. That way, if it doesn't work, you can go back and try something else. All right, so now I'm going to come back on the other side with Gorilla Tape. Um, this stuff's good heavy duty. I have made a lot of things out of this. I've seen, you know, you see those duct tape wallets, things like that. Um, this is a really good, super heavy duty uh, duct tape. So if you're ever in need of something, I highly recommend it. Great for applications such as this. All right, so just like that, we've increased this, or decreased this opening significantly. So that's a lot less air that can be sucked in from other places and a lot less dust a lot less opening for dust to be sucked out. I'm going to make it just a little bit taller, but I'm going to do it with the tape, with the duct tape, so it has more flex when we need it. So there's that. I'm going to expose the edge. We don't want the sticky here because the dust would just pile up on it, which would probably be okay. Um, but you don't want to leave those exposed edges because then it can work underneath it. There we go. Guys, that, that's it. Now, so it still has flets right here to do it, but I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to cut um, two slits into the plastic and the tape that give it some flexing so whenever I bevel cut everything can move so see now I have those cuts so whenever I bevel all this can move and has just enough spring to go back all right time to put this on now I've got this back in place and as you see our gap started about right here where the yellow tape is all the way up here, it's now touching uh, just the bottom of these little uh, molding ridges in the top plate. It has enough flex to not cause a problem. And if for some reason this tape flexes and gets in the saw blade, it's just going to cut the tape. It's going to, it's not a big deal. The tape is going to give, it's not going to damage anything in the saw. I can't really do anything on the underside. It's pretty well enclosed um, due to the gearing and everything of the saw. Um, I might try it later, but I've reduced the openings for dust and uh, suction loss to happen by about um, two thirds to three quarters of the openings are now closed. All right, we're gonna test this out and I'll tell you my perception on how it's doing better or worse. It's raining outside, so I apologize for um, the distracting background noises. So that's how you improve the dust collection on your rigid R4513 heavy duty portable table saw. Um, this method should work on pretty much any of the job site saws that I come across and see they have about the same setup with their dust collection system. If you close in that gap, it improves it. My perception from one cut is that I'm getting a whole lot less spit back coming at me. Um, of course, I'll know more after I use it for a day and really see if I'm getting the same kind of buildup I've been getting. Um, but spit back um, coming back at me is already very much significantly re reduced. I don't know if that's just from the zero clearance insert 
or a combination of both. I'm thinking a combination of both. Uh, I didn't see as much coming out from the sides as I normally do. Um, very simple. Um, pretty much free. I think there's, uh, you can order a package of this tape that comes with five pieces in it from FastCap for, for less than $10. So less than $10, I dramatically improved the dust collection of my saw and made no permanent modifications to it that I can't undo if I decide it needs to be undone. Um, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to uh, go to my new website, dailywoodworks.com, and subscribe to our email list. We're going to do a monthly um, newsletter uh, coming out real soon. Um, it's just going to kind of give you more uh, in-depth look into my shop of like, these are the projects I'm doing. Here's some tool tips. Here's some tool reviews. Um, here's some cool projects I've done. Those kind of things. Um, so be sure to check that out. And as always, you can follow me on all my social media. Um, including YouTube, please subscribe, Daily Woodworks on Facebook, and Daily Woodworks on Instagram and Pinterest. You can just search Daily Woodworks on each of those and I will come up to the top. Uh, thank you for watching. Um, please like, share, and subscribe to this video if you found it useful. Um, leave the comments below. Uh, try to respond to all of them. And we will see you next time.